Hey, what's going on? Welcome to Rapid Fire Reaper Tutorials, all info, no fluff. And today we're connecting Ableton to Reaper via Rewire. This was requested by one of my lovely viewers. And I gotta admit, we kind of missed the boat on this one a little bit because Rewire has already been discontinued by Propellerhead. So as of Ableton 11, you no longer have Rewire capabilities in Ableton, but it still works with Live 10. However, it is a little bit buggy and there's no more support from it. So whatever problems you may have, tough luck. Now in the next tutorial, I will show you what I do to do all the stuff that Rewire does using other applications. It's a little more time consuming to set up, but the benefit to using it is that you can use it with Ableton 11, but you can also use it with any other DAW. So while it's complicated to set up, it's worth learning. So if you have Ableton 11, well, get out of here and come back next week. Otherwise, if you still use Ableton 10, you can still use Rewire and Rewire is really simple to use. So the order of operations is really important whenever you're rewiring any application to any other application. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to open Reaper first and we want to create a track and on that track we want to put this plugin rewire Ableton live and in your effects browser it's right near the top rewire Ableton live so once you put this on a track it is now safe to open live 10 so let's do that so here's Ableton 10 and as soon as we run Ableton 10 you can see that this tab MIDI sent to rewire has been populated so there are three things you can do with rewire you can send MIDI from Reaper to Ableton send audio back from Ableton to Reaper and you can also also send MIDI from Ableton to Reaper. So let's look at these one by one. And the first tab is MIDI sent to Rewire. So on the first column of this tab, we have buses and channels that go from Reaper to Ableton. And then we have the Rewire destination in the next column. And when you load a project, it will automatically populate any number of tracks that you have with the Rewire destinations. And if I create a new MIDI track here, as you can see, it automatically populated it there. And if I delete tracks here, those buses will automatically be freed up. So as we can see right now, bus one channel one is sending to synth lead track, bus one channel two is lead key, bus one channel three is my drum kit and so on and so forth. So I can now create additional tracks in Reaper, send MIDI from them to Ableton and control these instruments that I've created in Ableton. You know, so if you used to use Ableton 10 and you have tons of presets there and tons of effect tracks and stuff like that that you use, you don't need to throw all those away if you want to move to Reaper. You can have the best of both worlds using Rewire. So there are no plugins on these additional tracks. All I gotta do is make sure they are receiving MIDI from any inputs that you want to send to. And then I'll create a send from this track to my rewire track. So you can think of your rewire as essentially a hub. And this hub connects my two dots together. All the MIDI is collected from here and sent into rewire. And then rewire takes that MIDI and routes it to different tracks in my Ableton. And additionally, we can then collect audio or MIDI from here, send them back to this rewire track and from here send it to additional tracks. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, let's work with MIDI first. So when I create these new tracks, I will create a send from these tracks to my rewire track. I will disable the audio on these sends. I will send all the MIDI coming into this track to bus one, channel one of rewire. Just rinse and repeat for however many tracks I have. So next track is bus one, channel two. Next track is bus one, channel three and so on. So with this track armed and as you can see on the Ableton side, the MIDI from on this side is set to no input. So it's not taking any MIDI from any other resources. But if I now start playing this track, I'm controlling my synth lead from Reaper. And if I choose the next track, it comes out of lead key. Track three controls my drums and so on. So these tracks are receiving MIDI via rewire and then playing it. And then as you can see, the audio destination of these tracks are all set to rewire out. And rewire out offers you up to 64 buses to route audio back into rewire. That's on your host application. So bus one and two are your mix left and right. So that is the master out. And my individual tracks are set to bus three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and so on. Now to receive these back into rewire I'm gonna go to the next tab that's audio from rewire and as you can see the rewire outputs are routed here additionally each of these buses routes to a channel so my left and right go to my channel one and two on rewire bus three and four go to channel three and four five six and so on as you make additional tracks and as you have additional audio to route back into Reaper you will have additional channels available here which you can right click and set so it's a very simple system so this time the rewire column comes first 
and then that gets routed to these additional channels. And as I play my synths, you can see that my rewire track is receiving the audio from these applications. The next thing we need to do is send from rewire to additional tracks so we can get our isolated audio from each of these channels. I've already done this, so I'm just gonna show these. And here are our receiving tracks. So one more time, all the audio arrives back at Rewire. And from Rewire, I'm creating these additional sends. And as you can see, it sends bus three, four to my synth lead track right here. Five and six goes to the lead keys. Seven and eight goes to the drum kit. 11, 12, and so on. I have my audio one and two sent to this final track called Ableton Master. Or you can just play the audio right out of Rewire as well. So this one's optional. So now, Every track I play, the MIDI goes through Ableton, audio comes back here. Just like that. So you know, the setup for this takes a little bit of time to do, but once you have it set up once, you can basically save all of this as a track template. And basically this track structure works no matter what your setup is. Rewire is on top. There are some MIDI tracks sending to it. There are some audio tracks receiving from it. And that will always remain the same. In case in your project, you need additional tracks. If you need additional MIDI sends, you just duplicate this last one and you can choose the next available bus for that. So maybe bus one on channel six. Similarly here, I can always create additional audio tracks by just duplicating my last track. And all I gotta do is go up the channel. So new channels on sending track and choose like 13 and 14. So once you have the basic setup going, it's easy to kind of add to that based on what it is you're working with. Now, hopefully the benefits of this are very obvious to you. You know, you may have spent years in Ableton 10 creating your own presets and effects chains and all that stuff. You can still refer back to Ableton and use its sounds and effects and all that stuff some of which are really dope. At the same time, I don't necessarily want to relearn all the MIDI editing in Ableton, which I always found kind of frustrating and hard to work with. But in contrast to that, I'm very comfortable MIDI editing in Reaper. I have tons of cool hotkeys and stuff like that, which link up there if you haven't seen that video. So I can do my MIDI editing here. And similarly, I can then take audio back from Ableton and do all my mixing here with all my cool hotkeys, all the automation features that Reaper has that Ableton doesn't, as well as all my track templates and effects chains and all that stuff. Basically, if you have both those, I'm sure you're already thinking of so many ways of using this. You don't also need to send MIDI from Reaper to Ableton. If you're really comfortable with MIDI editing in Ableton, you can just do the MIDI stuff there and just receive the audio. The next benefit is similar to how I really prefer doing automation in Reaper versus Ableton, I really prefer to do MIDI mapping in Ableton versus Reaper. So what I've done, for example, is I wrote this little ditty just for this episode. And while this is playing, I can record record the output on these channels, but I can do some MIDI mapping on the Ableton side, which I find to be really easy. As you can see, I have some mappings here that I'm controlling my bass and stuff with. And the other cool thing with Ableton mapping system is if you open your MIDI mappings, you can see that each of these has a CC lane attributed to it. So for example, I can also write MIDI CC information on my sending tracks and then send that to control Ableton's parameters without even having a MIDI controller to begin with. So basically, if I want to record the audio back Back here, all I gotta do is right click on these receiving tracks, set the record to output. Stereo latency compensated is my preferred way. You can also just do stereo. And then I can arm these tracks and I can start recording in Reaper and it will play out of here. I'll do my knob twiddling on this side and record it back to Reaper. Another thing to notice is as you can see in Ableton, your BPM counter is kind of darkened. That's because when you run in Rewire, Reaper controls the transport between these two applications. So you can't change the tempo here, but if I make any kind of MIDI mapping on the Reaper side, that will be conveyed in real time to Ableton, which is really nice. And all the Ableton effects that have rates and stuff like that, that are time-based, that work on the tempo, will adapt in real time to the tempo changes. Even for giggles, let's make a tempo change happen in the middle of this. So without further ado, let's twiddle some knobs.
So hopefully you get the picture. We can do all kinds of hybrid setups using Rewire. There's one last thing we can do with Rewire, which I haven't showed yet, and that's sending MIDI from Rewire. And this is again possible to send any kind of MIDI from each of these Rewire tracks back into Reaper for processing. And this is useful, for example, if I want to use some of Ableton's MIDI effects to process my MIDI information and then send it back to Reaper to control something else in Reaper. This system, however, hasn't been working for me. As I seem to recall, all you had to do is set the MIDI to no output, just like all our MIDI froms are set to no output, but they still receive from Rewire. And then that MIDI would get sent back into Rewire. And from here, I can create a new track, send from Rewire to it, set it to no audio, set this to maybe let's choose something like bus four channel one. And all I got to do here is select bus four channel one on here, and any MIDI information we received would get back to it. And as you can see right now, this track is receiving MIDI, but it's not actually sending MIDI to this track at all. So this may be a bug or something. This may be something new that isn't working anymore. I don't know. If you do know, if I seem to be forgetting something, please let me know. But again, as far as I remember, it was just as automatic as everything else. But for some reason that has stopped working. And this is what you get when you use outdated, unsupported software. Sometimes stuff like this happens, but also in this case, this is not a huge loss because if there are any plugins I want to control using these MIDI effects, well, I can always put it here and then send the audio back to Reaper as well. There's always workarounds. And obviously the one thing that Rewire doesn't do is send audio to Rewire. So if you want to use some of Ableton's plugins, we can't do that via Rewire, but I'll show you that in the next tutorial using my system, which spoiler alert is Soundflower. PC users of Reaper also have Reroute and Reroute works way better than Soundflower and it's better implemented implemented into Reaper, but for Mac users, we don't have rear route, so we have to use a third party virtual bus. So we'll look at that next week. Thanks to Mayor Salvarda for requesting this tutorial. I'm very sad that Rewire has been discontinued because it's truly a very simple and great system that I've been using for years. But I also think Propellerhead or another company will very quickly fill this gap in the market. And just a final reminder, with Rewire setups, it's really important to remember the order of operations when it comes to opening and closing stuff. So the first thing you want to do is open open Reaper and load up this plugin. Once you do that, it's safe to open Ableton and then it will open in rewire mode. And similarly, when I'm done, I have to first save and close my Ableton project. After that, it becomes safe to save and close your Reaper. And so many times when I've seen rewire act out, it's because this order of operations was forgotten. So Ableton doesn't open in rewire mode and Reaper doesn't know what to send to, or sometimes it just freezes or crashes. Don't neglect the order of operations at all. So enough rambling. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you like the work I do, you can donate to me through buymeacoffee.com. The link of that will be in the description. Thanks to Helge H for being our most recent donor. Thanks to all our previous donors. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. Bye.